Good morning. It is my last morning here. I've got most of my stuff packed, including my tripod, which means I'm having to hold the phone. So if it's a little shaky, that's why I'm sorry. Uh, but was doing my morning devotions here before I actually got ready to uh, head out and start heading home. And just read this passage that just hit me upside the head. Um, it started convicting me some, um, but also one that I, I think a lot of us need to hear. It's in Luke chapter 18, and the only Bible I have available at the moment, besides the one on my phone, is packed. So I'm reading a King James, so I will attempt to uh, paraphrase, translate it a little bit into regular English for you. But it's Luke chapter 18, starting at verse 9. And Jesus um, it says, And he spoke this parable about certain, unto certain who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. Or he spoke this parable about those who were self-righteous. Two men went up into the temple to pray, one a Pharisee, the other a tax collector. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself, God, I thank you that I am not as other people are, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this Democrat, I mean, this Black Lives Matter, or, or, this liberal, uh, this tax collector. Let's see if I can get this out right here. I fast twice in the week. I give tithes on all that I possess. And the tax collector, standing afar off, would not lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven, but instead beat his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his home, justified rather than the other. For everyone that lifts himself up shall be humbled. And he that humbles himself shall be exalted. One of the things that I noticed on social media, as well as um, a number of other areas, is how many believers, followers of Jesus, or at least they make sure they let you know that. Um, and I believe most of them are sincere, sincerely believe that they think that. How much they show how holy, how exalted, how self-righteous they are, not realizing they're falling into this trap. Look at that horrible person over there. Thank you, God, I'm not like them. They're just terrible. They're rotten. They're evil. Everything about them is horrible. They're going to hell and they deserve it. And they lift themselves up this way by trying to put other people down. And they do this in the name of faith a lot of times. Oh, I'm just calling out their sin. I'm just pointing out what's wrong with them. Um, really, they're speaking hatefully and evilly. They sound like this Pharisee here who is saying, oh, thank God I'm not like them. I'm good. I do what I'm supposed to. I'm righteous and saved, and they're not. Thank you, God, that I'm not like them. We're doing it wrong. Uh, I had, I've seen people say, over the years, a number of times. Yes, but Jesus, when he spoke to the Pharisees and when John the Baptist ripped into the Sadducees, and, and I'm kind of going, okay, you know, one, there's two things going on there that don't apply to us. One, they're saying it personally to them, which we don't a lot of times. Um, and, okay, three things here. Two, the people they're talking to are the self-righteous religious leaders in pretty much every single case where John the Baptist and Jesus rips into somebody, they're self-righteous religious leaders. In fact, I can't think of an exception to that, which says something about their criticisms. They're not speaking to the unsaved, they're speaking to the ones who think they're saved and, do, and showing the right way. Second, they're John the Baptist and Jesus, which we are not. Uh, Jesus is pretty clear that's not our job. And in fact, when his disciples did so, he rebuked them. It, it's one thing to call out a sin, especially on a public figure, when a public figure sins. But it's another thing to write them off as evil and debased and, you know, and rip into them personally. Okay? We can call out, you know, hey, folks, that's a lie. It, it's not true. He shouldn't be saying that it's a lie. It's another thing to say he's a liar, evil, 
personified going to hell. That, that, that doesn't work, okay? Um, and, and people have gotten confused. When I have called out a couple certain public figures about what they do, and they said, you shouldn't rip into him like that. And yet then they turn around to do the opposite and do worse to people who they disagree with. Uh, can we say hypocrite much? <laughs> we need to get off our religious high horse. Again, it's one thing to call out a sin. It's another thing to destroy a person to speak in hatred, to show how exalted we are and how terrible they are. As long as we're ripping into other people and doing like this Pharisee does, at least I'm not like them, those horrible rotten people. Look how good I am. I preach at the church. I go every Sunday. I give my tithes. Oh, aren't I wonderful? It, it, it's sad. Um, and unfortunately, I, I'm thinking of so many personal examples uh, of people ripping into other people, ripping other believers, destroying other stuff. Um, I, I, I know one person, love him dearly, great person, but this college I'm wearing, he loves to rip it, hates it with a passion. I wish you'd go visit it. Might see people getting saved and filled with the Spirit and, and everything else, but there's a fear there, and I spoke about fear the other day. Watch my Sunday sermon tomorrow. It's going to be about fear. But pride is a huge issue. And folks, our church has fallen into the realm of the Pharisees. We've sold our souls to political stuff and others. We've lifted ourselves up. We've tried to say how wonderful we are, how fantastic we are, and how terrible everybody in the opposite spectrum is, regardless of what the opposite spectrum is. I see this as well from liberal Democrats, even though I kind of jokingly, let's be honest, most of my circle is conservative Republicans following Trump. That's why I, I pick on that a bit. But if I was hanging around people who were all liberal Democrats, it would be the opposite, okay? So it, it plays both ways. It really does. Uh, I, I, I try to follow God's side, not the political side. Um, although I have my leanings. Anyways, <laughs> nice dichotomy. But I see such a pride there that, oh, thank you. I'm not like them. Lord, forgive us. Can we at least see what we really are and how debased we are and how torn up we are and what a mess we are? Can we get our pride out of the way? Oh, Lord. I mean, pride is one of the seven deadly sins from Proverbs. Uh, and it's actually, it, it's so bad, it's actually listed twice if you think about it. When you read the passage, uh, number one and seven are both pride. Why is it doubly listed? Because it's such a bad problem. Because pride closes your mind to everything that God wants to actually say to you and do in your life. You can't hear it. You can't see it. Because you are so puffed up and full of yourself. You can't see your own sin. You can't see when you're so blunt spoken that you hurt other people. And you don't care. You can't see when you forget to show people that you love them because you don't care. You can't see when you've spoken harsh words because you don't care. You can't see when you ignore people around you and what they're going through because you don't care, because you're so full of pride you can't see it. And yes, I'm kind of listing things that I've been dealing with this week in my own life. Um, Lord, break down my pride. Forgive me for those things that I do wrong, for the people I hurt, for the people I alienate. God help me to speak truth, but speak truth in love. And forgive me for those I've hurt. God be merciful to me. I don't deserve it. I'm a sinner. I need your grace. That's the prayer all of us should be praying. That's the prayer we should be praying for others as well. For whoever it may be. God have mercy on me. Have mercy on them. God, forgive us all because we're sinners. God, break through our pride 
God destroy our pride. Get through it so that we can be the people that you that you want us to be, that you've called us to be, that we're supposed to be. God help us to be like this tax collector and not like the Pharisee. God bless.